Hello and welcome to 45 JavaScript Exercises, part of the Code Up application process for the web development program. All right, so let's jump right in. What we're going to be doing is doing a video orientation of the instructions, the orientation, and your regular workflow for working through these set of exercises. So, first things first on our quick start, you create yourself an account on glitch.com and then return to this page. Now you know your email address, you're gonna figure out your own password, so let's pretend you've already done that. The next thing we'll do is click Remix on Glitch so that we make your own copy of these exercises. Well, here's what that, that's gonna do. The page will look the same, but the project name will no longer be called 45JS Exercises. It'll be some randomly generated name that's unique to your new account, okay? Uh, then we will use glitch.com's editor in the web to edit code in the 45 exercises JavaScript file and we'll view our work on this home page. So there's, there's no substitute for reading the directions uh, carefully, but let's, let's jump right in and click the button, Remix on Glitch. What's going on right now is the Glitch platform is making a carbon copy of this project and generating a random new project name that's unique to you and your account. So this new project name is called Mini Elite Snipe and your project name will have some other randomized name. Okay, so what we're seeing right now is the Glitch editor. So you see we have some files on the left in the middle, we have the README, which is some text directions. And then on the right, we have a preview of your homepage. See that web page address is minielitesnipe.glitch.me. So if you're loading these exercises for the first time, well, we did that already and we made a fresh remix. Now, how to see the directions? We just did that. This preview pane on the right uh, doesn't show everything, right? So uh, what we can do is one of two things. You can either click this preview button below and select preview in a new pane, or on your keyboard, you can use the keyboard command control shift R. This brings up a new copy, or it brings up the home page rather. So launching the preview brings up your home page. You'll see that it is your project based on the randomized name. Now we gotta be careful. If you click Remix on Glitch again, you're going to make a copy of a copy. So don't make copies of copies, right? So here's what we do. We're going to use Glitch's editor to edit the code in the 45.js exercises file. And then we come back to this page to check our progress. Okay, so let's recap that again. Editor in one window, or in one tab in your browser, and then a preview of your homepage in another. Okay, so the editor is to the left, and the only thing that you're going to be editing is the actual JavaScript file called 45.js exercises. Okay, now when we go back and look at our um, instructions, we, we need to do a little bit more orientation. So this index homepage shares the instructions, and the JS console that's the JavaScript console that's attached to this web page will show you any errors or any messages to move forward, okay? So the only time the JavaScript console shows no errors is when you are 100% done with these exercises, okay? Depending on your browser, there's a couple of ways of opening the JavaScript console. I recommend the keyboard shortcuts and they're listed right there. So what we're looking at right now is a is the JavaScript console for your copy, for a new copy of the 45 JavaScript exercises. Here's what's going on. We have our very first error, an uncaught reference error. That usually means a variable is not defined. And the variable called doing JavaScript right now is not defined. So our expected workflow is open up JavaScript to see the next error, each error message tells you the next exercise to solve. So our first exercise will be to start doing some JavaScript and define this variable, okay? How do we, how do we find uh, these lines? Well, this error is telling us in the 45.js exercises file on line 39, there is a reference to doing JavaScript right now that doesn't exist. 
So, where's the editor? The editor is back in the, your other tab on, on Glitch, and let's open up the 45JS exercises file. And I'm going to close this preview to get a little more screen space. What we see here is we have some JavaScript. There's a bunch of code at the top that is predefined. Keep that the way it is. Same with this other code. Keep this function here. Um, and then we are going to welcome you to the exercises. So the first exercise is an example problem. Create a variable called doing JavaScript right now and assign it the Boolean of true. Okay, here's an example of that var doing JS right now is true. And the, if we read the comments even more carefully, the comments tell us what to do. To complete exercise zero, uncomment the following line of JS. And to uncomment a line of code, you backspace the commenting characters. Now we noticed a change right there. You see that we now saw some red on code afterwards. So the lines below test your answer. So this assertion is testing if we if you created a variable called doing JavaScript right now and the value is true, then you get credit for it. The preview at the bottom or command shift R, control shift R, control shift R rather, will bring up your page. And now we, when we refresh your page, we see that we get a new error. New errors in these exercises mean that you're making progress. So now we see another exercise, another reference error. This is your second reference error. This means there's probably a variable that needs defining. The reference error is on Mars right now, is not defined. And as we look at to the source of that issue, the JavaScript file called 45 exercises line 47. So let's go back to the editor and we can, we can read, oh look, Line 47, there's a, there's a problem. So the assertion is looking for a variable called on Mars right now that holds the value false. That's how to read that assertion. And then, oh, look, exercise directions. On the line below, create a variable named on Mars right now and assign it the Boolean value of true or false. So var on Mars right now. Now the capitalization and the spelling matter a lot to computers and we're going to assign on Mars right now to false. We'll refresh the page and look at that. We have great success. Exercise one is now correct. And see how we keep the console open for feedback. We see a new error. Get used to it. New errors are part of life in software development. So we have a new reference error. There's a variable called fruits that's not defined. 45 exercises JS line 56 in that editor. So lines 56 says, oh, fruits isn't there, which means you need to read the instructions. Exercise number two, for more on arrays, read this important uh, documentation on arrays from the Mozilla developer docs. And then we see create a variable named fruits and assign it an array of strings containing the following fruits. Mango, banana, guava, kiwi, and strawberry. Now, as I, as I work through this, if we go var fruits and we say mango, banana, guava, kiwi, and strawberry, we have something that looks like a solution here. But there's the editor's telling us something's going on. Mango's not defined, banana's not defined, guava's not defined. I don't know, maybe we can try the, the browser again, try the, the home page and see what it says. Now the home page says mango is not defined. What I've done here is I've purposefully produced an error to give you some orientation. Regular words or characters in JavaScript will always have strings around them, will always have quotation marks around them. And in a way, you can kind of cheat here because if you copied this exact bit of code, which is the, the correct answer, you would have the correct answer. So we put strings around mango, we put strings around banana, we put strings around guava, or quotation marks, around kiwi, strawberry, and then let's, let's zoom out, refresh, 
And look at that, exercise two is correct. All right, so now we have to work on some vegetables on line 65. You see this process. You get the answer correct. You see a new error because the error is coming from the next exercise not being complete. So don't freak out when you see errors. Everything's cool. Now, if you see other information in this console, uh, I'm referencing uh, if we saw other junk in your console here. Go ahead and ignore all this junk to ignore all these other messages. And this could be from your browser. That could be from plugins you have installed. Go to the all levels and turn off the verbose. We just care about the error itself. So we're making great progress and let's move on to the next exercise. The next exercise is very similar. Exercise number three, create a variable named vegetables and assign it an array of strings containing the following vegetables. So let's make a variable for vegetables and assign the array eggplant, carrot, cauliflower, and zucchini. Now, you see I left out broccoli. Broccoli is in the answer it's looking for, not in the code that I produced here. And when we check our work, we see that there's a difference. Computers pay a lot of attention to the details. That's what they're about. So the assertion was expecting to see a list of strings, eggplant, broccoli, carrot, cauliflower, zucchini. And what we got was eggplant, carrot, cauliflower, zucchini, and we missed broccoli. So we've got to add broccoli in. And order matters too, because if we put broccoli at the end, we get a similar error message. We have the order matters. And it, unless it specifically doesn't matter for a very specific reason, order matters with computing a lot. Okay. So I'm going to put the broccoli string in the right area, the right spot. And we're going to refresh. Hey, look at that. Exercise number three is correct. And now we have a new error. New errors mean progress. Line 73 is the code checking for exercise number four. Okay, so let's work through this. Create a variable named numbers and assign it an array of numbers. This one should be pretty straightforward. Numbers is an array of numbers separated by commas. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Let's check our work. And we got credit for the work. Okay, <clears throat> this we're going to demo one more exercise here, and it looks like okay, uh, we have an exercise assert failed in exercise five on line uh, line eighty two. It looks like line eighty two right there. Okay, so we see expected the same list of fruits with tomato at the end. So let's go read the exercise directions. Exercise five, add the string tomato at the end of the fruits array. Now there's a hint here. Recommend finding and using a built-in JavaScript operation to add to an array rather than recreating the array manually. So what do we do? How to add an item to an array in JavaScript. Whenever you don't know what to do, you ask a search engine what to do. It's that simple. And we see the first example has come to us from W3 Schools. That's a, a very well-established site. Oh, look, they have an example with fruits as well. Banana, orange, apple, mango, fruits.push, kiwi. Let's see what this does. When we run their code, the code, the name of the array, the variable name of the array dot push, adds a new item onto the end. See how we have kiwi on the end of the code. So we're going to do dot push. So I'm going to copy that. And this is this is much much more programmatic than retyping the entire array. So when we say fruits dot push, even if this fruits list or this fruits array is a thousand things long, to the push pushes on the end of the list. So it depends on to the end of the list. So let's check our work for exercise number five. We refresh, wonderful. Exercise five is done and we have a programmatic answer. And now we have an uncut error, assertion failed in exercise number six on line 90. Let's go check it out. Exercise six, it looks like the same problem. Uh, push the tomato 
string onto the end of the vegetables array, okay? So this has been your orientation to the 45 JavaScript exercises and great luck to you, happy coding, and let us know how we can be of assistance to you.